right, here we go, guys. Uh, so here's my video on Robin Hood. This is going to be a fun one. There is a lot of cool stuff that Robin Hood is doing. Uh, I actually want to kind of jump into that, I think, first. Or no, you know, I'll go over financials and I'll kind of talk through some of these things uh, too. Let's start off with some of the stuff that they're doing. So right now, Robin Hood is being oversubscribed in regard to IRAs. Uh, you can see my friend uh, Doug over here. He got he just earned fifty seven hundred dollars in a three percent match from Robinhood for IRAs. Now that locks him into a five year contract with these guys, or he loses that match, and it makes it to where he's got to stick with their gold membership program, where he pays a monthly fee, which they're looking at raising uh, for a year. I think it's a year, maybe it's two. I think it's at least one. So Robinhood is being really smart right now. They're they're stealing customers from all of these major institutions like Vanguard recently that said, we don't want to touch Bitcoin. Um, all those people are like, let's go somewhere else. Robinhood was leaning into that. They had, they had um, posts on here that were hilarious, showing people getting pulled away from Bitcoin in a, in a meme and then saying F that and going to Robinhood. And so they've capitalized greatly. They're oversubscribed to a, to a three-week delay right now. With the people that are trying to transfer in, it might have gotten worse. Vlad said, hey, we're working on making this a lot better. Um, we'll get her done quick. But they're they're getting a lot of love right now. And this is they're going to be one of the biggest brokers around as they continue to acquire and pull from these other guys. Now, the elephant in the room. We're going to go over more cool stuff. But here's the elephant. If you if you know what dumb the movie Dumb Money is, or you know who Vlad is, or you know who Roaring Kitty or Deep Effing Value is, and you know who Citadel um, is, and and you you know what happened with GameStop, then I'm not telling you anything new. But these guys took a huge hit, PR hit, um, massive PR hit, a couple of years ago. Gosh, it might have even been longer than that. It's it says oh, two and a half years ago, um, 2022, 2023. These guys have just been in the in the dumps. And I don't have, they're actually from the high, which is a crazy high. They're down 87%. But even even if we just look down to a reasonable number, they're down 81%. So they're they're very much like my SoFi, PayPal plays, um, the Meta, the the um, the Tesla, the Palantir, the stuff that I've done where I've made just tons of money. And uh, and so far, like I'm starting to now, they're up 20% on the day. So, so th this is one of those opportunity plays where you have an asymmetric return with limited risk. And this one right here is anywhere from like a four to nine x versus the underlying asset with the potential of 100% losses if it doesn't if 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 you drop if it drops down with options you want them to go up. And I'll go over some of those numbers in a little bit, but. Again, these guys took a massive PR hit. I think it's kind of unjust because Vlad had no choice but to turn off the buy button during the game uh, stop fiasco. He had no choice but to do that. And again, I, I can't hate the people that were buying GameStop. I get the mentality behind being mad at Wall Street. Citadel never actually had anything happen with them, even though it was clear that there were text message communications between them and Robin Hood, where they forced Robin Hood to shut down the buy button, or they were going to shut them down. So, like, the, the day of. So, so Robin Hood was forced to do this. Lab was forced. He didn't have $3 billion. He couldn't come up with the insurance money that was needed in order to be able to keep it to where they were able to still operate. Citadel had them buy the balls. And so... They turned off the buy button. It was the only option. In the movie, they portray Vlad pretty badly. He's not that bad of a dude. He just did what he had to do. Sure, options for order flow isn't isn't uh, isn't necessarily the greatest thing. One sec, my dog's being crazy. Isn't necessarily the greatest thing. There's benefits to it, and then there's you know things that aren't so wonderful. It's kind of a hidden way to get fees. Um, and and again, you're not necessarily getting the be best price, but you don't have a fee, and it's really easy to do. So. There's caveats to that, but that said, he has done a great job with this company since that happened, since that massive drop that we saw. He has pushed really, really hard on IRAs. That's what he was doing, essentially, and I, I'm going to jump over. I'm going to jump between you know revenue and all this other stuff. Monthly active users were declining for a while. 
people thought that that was such a horrible thing, but that's because he was being smart. He was shifting his interest away from day trading because he could see the signs. The Fed had just hiked rates at the most aggressive rate in history or was starting to. And he could see, hey, trading isn't where it's going to be at. We need to start getting a different broadened business model. We need to have retirement accounts in here where we have dedicated forms of income. And then also, too, they started pushing their gold membership, which is currently, I think, given 5% uh, APY on cash because they knew that they could start making money off of that. And you can see the interest segment of the revenue here. But I'm going through a lot really quickly. But look at this. Revenue year growth year over year is 29% for Robinhood. So even though they're the monthly active users, and again, this isn't users. This is active users. Their membership is actually still pretty decent. I think I can, I've got that metric and I can show it to you um, here. Let me see. It's in one of these. Uh, do, 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 do. Maybe it's in here. Do, 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 do. It's in one of them. I'll try and find it. But their membership is actually still really good and growing. But their monthly active users declined because, again, they didn't have day trading. So this, this is a figure that everybody focused on, and it was stupid because you could see assets under custody has been rising. You could see average revenue per user is going up. You could see their net income was getting in the right place. Again, revenue segments, looking at that breakdown, looks good. Average user balance, that's going to increase dramatically. These guys are oversubscribed on their IRA transfers by a three-week delay currently right now where Vlad's having to figure this out. It's turning into a problem because they've gotten so much interest from everybody trying to move over. So the average user balance expect that to go up. Look at their cash to debt. They took care of stuff. They got it to where they've got high cash, limited to no debt. They have, let's look over here. I think there's another good chart. Gold subscribers going up. Again, they're going to start paying or charging these people more too. And uh, net ignore net deposits. Again, there's going to be, there's there's when crypto comes back, there is going to be massive amounts of money flowing into this. And you can see this by looking at what was happening in 2021. When speculation increases, which it will do with a rate environment coming down, people are going to search for yield. They want to get greater returns. When they see that they're not getting 5% anymore, maybe it drops to 4 maybe it drops to 3 because rates start dropping in the coming months and quarters, they're going to say, I need money. I need to make money. My friend made 100% buying these freaking options, yellowing into whatever crap he was in. I want something decent. 3% isn't covering it. So speculation will increase, and it just happens to be increasing heading into the Bitcoin happening in April. And then we're looking at a year and a half of upside from where we are right now, at least right around that number based upon historical patterns in Bitcoin and the crypto markets. And then that lines up perfectly with the lowering of rates. The mortgage market started to come back online. People are still spending. They've got 35 to 40% more wealth in their real estate than they had before the pandemic. And with rates coming down, they can tap it with equity lines of credit and home equity loans. So speculation will increase. And as that happens, this, this will be one of the benefactors of that. And them getting beat up and being down you know, 81% from reasonable levels for the high here or almost 90% or 87% from their actual peak will benefit people greatly that are smart and can see the value. The stock is under 10 billion right now. It is, it is cheap in comparison. And when people start to see the growth that's associated with this and they start to see speculation coming back, you can trade crypto on here too. It's limited, but I think that's probably going to expand. I think they're probably going to add more on here, just like Coin has. So again, there's opportunity abounds. These guys have the best app out there. They have so many new things coming. They have X1 credit card that they purchased this last year um, company, where they're going to probably be issuing their own credit card soon. So you're going to see a ramp up in, in IRA accounts and balances. You're going to see uh, credit card services coming to these guys. Not even just that. They've got the UK expansion, which we still haven't even seen um, yet. We're going to start getting numbers, I think, for Q4 for that. That started this last year at the, like the end of Q3 heading into Q4, somewhere around there. They're adding a bunch of new features. They're going to have futures trading, index options, short selling, joint accounts, tax lots selection. Uh, again, 5% APY, 3% IRA match with gold membership. Margins, 50K instant deposits. You can put 50K in here and have it directly. They're adding professional research for morning, through Morningstar reporting. They're going to have real-time market data, NASDAQ level two. Like, they've been adding and building throughout this down this trough over the last two and a half years. They've been smart. And that's why you're seeing things like 
the number of uh, installs from Robinhood. You're seeing this kind of stuff where their activity is going up. There were 14 here on the chart on iOS and I think 15 on Android. So there's a lot of excitement for this company right now. Um, and, and it's justified. They're, they're being really smart. Also, they had a, let me go into this real quick. Um, they had a lawsuit that finally got settled for really pennies on the dollar in regard to the gamification and the whole GameStop thing. They paid a $7.5 million fine. That's behind, behind them now. Um, let me see here. Is there anything I'm missing? Yeah, no, I think that's, I think I covered a lot of that. So let's, let's jump real quickly. So again, if you got a pretty good beat on this, on this, and you you could see where the opportunity is with this growth and see what potential they have, I want to point out the charts. So I think that this stock in the next couple of months will test up against the 1340 range. And I think when we break above that, turn that into support and the dot 786 Fibonacci, once we do that, 17 is in short order. I think this could happen in a quarter. Worst case, two. I think within three, we could be up here within the $30 range. So I think my targets are really between like 17 and 30. Let's look at that for options contracts. Now, I have 2025 up, but I'm actually buying 2026 too. I think that might even be a better play. Um, I do have some of those. I'd have to look and see what they are. I could do a follow-up video where I compare a bunch of these if there's interest. But I have 2,300 contracts. It's 0.68 cents a contract for January 2025 at $20. Now, let's look at what some of the potential is here for, for returns. And again, these aren't guaranteed. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm a high school dropout who just happened to get rich from investing and then retire at the age of 42, roughly four years ago. Sorry, got to throw the disclaimer out there. This is not personalized financial advice. This is what I'm doing. And I'm trying to use this subject matter as a lesson for you on what opportunity you might be able to find if you do the work, if you use the tools that I have. And I'm doing it for free. So let's look at this here. So about $156,000 uh, in this. In this, I started buying January 2026 too. So I've got that play and I, I think that one's going to be even better. So I'll, again, we'll do the follow-up. But if I look here, let's say that by April, by the next earnings report, we get some data and they look good and we test up to that 17 range or right around there or in between here. I make 200% off of a 50% move, roughly. So I'm making about 4X. So I can make $400,000 in April or more if we just hit those levels right around there, right? But let's say that by like July, the second quarter, they do really good and they get up to that 30 level. Or even, let's just say by the January, if they get to that 30 level, I make over $2.3 million off of 156 grand. This is asymmetric opportunity. Now, you can lose it all. If they don't go anywhere by October or November, it's just gone. It's dust. But we have time to play with that. If they don't go anywhere by J July, I'm down 100 grand, but I still got 56 in this thing. So again, there's room and I'm okay with losing it all. If this doesn't play out, I'm okay with losing it all. I've got a bunch of different bets going in different directions. You can see that very clearly here on my profile that I've got, and this, I've got to update this. I've made some trades today and then I did some on Friday when I was sick. So I'll, I'll get this updated after this um, video, but you can see 15% in PayPal, asymmetric opportunity, uh, hood, Options, asymmetric opportunity. SoFi, options, asymmetric opportunity. Think I'm up at like 100,000 today on that alone. ArcG, options, asymmetric opportunity. Square, options, asymmetric. Chip coins, asymmetric. I've got a large quantity now. TNA, this is a 3X fund on the Russell Index, so small caps. I think I can make 150% off of that over the next year. Um, again, all this crypto related stuff, I think I can do. Uh, anywhere from seven to, to 15 X on these, like the numbers are great. So these are all just asymmetric opportunities, right? Like CLSK today is up like uh 10%. So I don't need them all to work out. I just need a few of them to do well. And I do well. So that's my whole point. Asymmetric diversification is where it's at. If we got to, if we fail here and like, let me go back with my hood. If we fail on hood and let's say we like just even get, like, we reject at 17. Just reject at 17. I still can make a multitude. I can make a 4 x or 3 to 4X over the next couple of quarters and then reevaluate and see if it's still worth it. 
But if it starts to run into July, and let's say it even stops at like 26, I make $1.7 million. I make more than 10x. More than 10x my contribution. So this is just, these. this is the kind of stuff you want to do. Use these kind of tools. Use optionsprofitcalculator.com. It's not perfect. Read the disclaimer. It's just giving you a rough ballpark based upon like IV scores and theta and gamma and all the all this stuff that all the official things that people like to use so that they sound smart. Well, I don't touch it if it unless it gets an IV score. Blah, 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 blah. Like they'll tell this is the visual version of that, so you can ignore the bullshit and you can actually see what will my loss be if it gets to this point. What will my gain be? And if you make a bunch of asymmetric bets, I've got hedges too. Again. I'm in I'm in a best buy hedge and I'm going to be adding to this. It's only 1% of my portfolio. I'd like to get my hedges up to 5% in the next couple of months as I make money, as I make this 100,000 off of SoFi, potentially a million or so off of SoFi, potentially millions off of PayPal, potentially a million or two off of Hood. As I make a bunch of this money in the next couple of months, I'm going to add to my hedge plays so that I have safety. Those are probably going to be like my best buy shorts, um, probably stepping into S Starbucks, except it's been falling too much. I would like it to go up a little bit so I could buy some of that one. And there might be some other ones I add to too. But you can make it to where you have a pretty balanced portfolio, but whatever direction you head in, you're safe and potentially making tons of money. And so that's what I like to do. Use these tools like the calculator. Use the tool like NASDAQ.com. Go to market activity and options chain to look and see, okay, for January 2025, out of the money, for those $20, uh, $20 strikes that Jesse's looking at, oh, I can see it's got a bunch of open interest and volume. That means that if I try and get out of this after making a bunch of money and I'm not in one of these low volume open interest ones, I'll actually be able to sell and get like the full potential of my returns for this what this option calculator was saying roughly I'd get. And instead of having to sell and finding out there's no buyers there and then having to dial way down and just losing a ton because... There's just no volume, and and you have to you have to lose a fortune because you 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 couldn't sell. I want I want to be able to sell. I want the open interest. I want the volume. I look here before I buy any of these. If if you want to learn more about options, watch some of my videos. I'll probably tag one in the end card here. That that's a good one. That where I was talking about Bitcoin related investments, and I was talking about some option stuff too. But take a look at this stuff. In the comments, tell me what you think. Please like, subscribe, join if you want to support my work. I'm trying. I'm at, I'm going to try and do two videos a day. Maybe it's one and a half for a while. Maybe it's only one uh, if you look out over a full 30 days in a month, let's say. But I'd like to get to two, three. I'd like to provide like really crazy content. I want to expand my reach so that I can help more people understand all these concepts about investing and the times where options come in handy, like now where you have really depressed stocks but you have asymmetric potential upside because of the macro environment, the fundamentals. And again, the TA that we're looking at, you don't always use options. I'm actually usually very conservative. And if I make a bunch of money off of these and they get expensive, I'll be in stock. When people were asking me about options for Bitcoin miners, I was telling them no, because I couldn't even get 2x returns the underlying. I like at least three. I like three, the underlying, or it's not good math for me. Why risk 100% when you could still have the stock if it dropped and then have the potential to recover if you can't get at least a three-bagger? Don't do it if you can just get an extra 50% or double your money if it does really, really well. That's stupid. Options only work part of the time. Be smart. So anyway, yeah, like, subscribe, join to help support the channel. Do whatever you can. And in the comments, at the very least, Tell me what you think. And if you have additional videos, I look at comments to figure out what I'm going to queue up next. So tell, tell me what you want to see, and I'll be happy to talk about it. But I hope you got a lot of benefit from this. I love you guys. Uh, I'm going to sign off for now and then get that portfolio allocation updated. Uh, talk to you guys later. Bye.